were just driving to Walmart and about two miles from home and we were pulling out from a stop sign and a truck going 60, they hit us. So we were T-boned and Veronica was in a coma for two weeks and on life support and in the hospital for just over three months. I was in the hospital for three weeks. I have a moderate traumatic brain injury. Hers is severe because we told her the whole time, she's beautiful, she's perfect. We always told her she was perfect. And now we're 16 years later and she walks around, I know I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do have a brain injury and I'm unable to work because my memory is so poor. And also, um, when I drive, I get lost really easily to the point where she's with me most of the time, thank heavens, and she looks on her GPS. But I've been alone before driving and not really close to home, and I've called Greg at work crying. I'm lost, and I, I don't know where I am. Help me, help me. And he would say, I can't help you until you can tell me where you are. Drive to the next intersection and then tell me where you are. And also it's dangerous because then I'm on the telephone while I'm driving. Yeah. So that's really hard. So what I do is um, I have a calendar and during, uh, well, I put everything I need to do in the calendar. And at night, Greg will look at the calendar. And if it says I have to go to an appointment or something, he'll say, do you know where you're going? And then, and if I don't, he'll, he'll help me. Sometimes he draws a map, even though I have GPS, I get confused. Um, the mo then in the morning, I, I write it on a note the night before and I put it on the counter. And when he's eating breakfast, he looks at the note and he asks me again in the morning, do you know where you're going? And then we go through it. The problem happens is when I make an extra trip I'm going to go to Walmart. I'm going to go to Target. And then I get lost. And he doesn't know. It's good if he knows my plans for the day. That way he can help me. So, and now we have Life 360. But he has to leave his phone in the car when he's at work. Because he, he has a top secret clearance and everything's classified. And he can't take a telephone gotcha. in with him. So... Yeah, I so still you have, have to go out to his car. Things, but, right. But things that are really hard. A lot of people have said there's a lot of stigma against brain injuries, but I'm very open and I'm a pretty good communicator. And I tell people right off the bat, I might forget what I'm saying and it seems like I'll forget where I'm going, but I'll get it back. Hopefully. And I tell people right when I meet them, I have a brain injury and I have these problems and I've never, ever, even one time had people look at me funny that I have a brain injury. They, I've, it's been 16 years and people have been so empathetic to me. So I feel really bad when people say they have people that have, I forgot what I was saying right in the middle. When people are t telling people they feel stigmatized because of having a brain injury. Right. You feel bad to hear that. People I, feel I'm, lucky. I'm really fortunate. I haven't had that, but I'm more open than a lot of people. And I think if you just behave some way and nobody understands what's going on, they might think they like people will think Veronica's drunk and she's not drunk. Mm -hmm. That used to happen much more than it happens now, but yeah. They'll think maybe you're taking medication and you're affected or maybe taking drugs, but that's not the case. Yeah. Now I know I've told Rob prior to my uh, concussion, I had an anxiety disorder and I feel like my anxiety disorder has actually gotten worse since the concussion and having the post concussion syndrome. Uh, did you have your, um, the bipolar before the con? Before your brain injury? I and had bipolar. So do you feel like the brain injury changed it? I had bipolar disorder for many years since I'm 55 now when I was 24, when I was diagnosed. 
and I would get okay. something called hypomanic. I would have all this energy, but I wouldn't stay up all night or um, do crazy things. The craziest thing I ever did was buy something expensive at the store. And my husband said, you have to take it back. If I thought it was going to solve the problem, you could keep it, but it's not. So I did spend a little bit of money unwisely, but um, it was not as bad before my injury. And then after I went absolutely manic, I woke up one day and I started walking 10 miles a day in one day after waking up soon, it was 12 miles a day. And then I was staying up at night and there's this little closet in my daughter's room in the, in the basement. And she had moved out. I would sit in that little closet. I like put a clock on the wall. I put pictures on it. It was this little tiny closet and I would sit in there and do crafts and I would listen to my MP3 player, but I would always feel like I was in trouble if I was awake because I knew I wasn't supposed to be. So I would try and hide it from my husband. But I mean, he knew mm. he would come out and I emptied every closet, every drawer, every cabinet. And one day he came in and I was in my daughter's bathroom downstairs and the linen closet, I just went with every shelf and under the sink, everything that was under there. And I was sitting on the floor in the middle of all of it. And he came to say goodbye to me before he went to work. He was a little shocked, but he knew I was not myself. So he kind of unfortunately was getting used to me doing these things. And I was being treated, but it takes time for the medicine to work. So I had, I had about six weeks of that kind of behavior. And one time he, um, he wouldn't let me drive and I took the car keys. I snatched them really fast and he didn't get them in time. And we kind of wrestled over them, but I took them and I went out the door and I got up and he followed me in his vehicle and I didn't know it. I was being so careful driving down a super busy road. Okay. Don't go too fast. Use your mirrors. Don't go too fast. And where I was going to go, I drove all the way to my, um, my doctor's office. I wanted him to fix me, but it was closed. So he ended up getting in the drive in the parking lot where I was and, and, and I had a brand new phone and I didn't know how to use it. I was trying to call 911 on myself because I didn't know what I was doing and I knew I didn't know what I was doing, but I didn't know how. So, um, hmm. he, he got to the parking lot and he made me get in his car and drove home and yeah, he threw the keys on the ground and the little, the little things that goes over the lock and the unlock fell off the little plastic thing. And yeah, it was a, it was a big fight, but, I, and then for two weeks I was fine, but with every high comes a low. And then mm -hmm. I was yeah. so depressed. I was laying in bed every day and I would take a bath to try and feel better. But my brain injured daughter would sit in there with me. Um, she was in her twenties at the time. She would sit in there with me so I wouldn't hurt myself. I wanted, I wanted to do bad things. I wanted to drive my vehicle into a brick wall. It's what I really wanted, but wow. that's why I wasn't allowed to drive. And then, um, she would stay in bed with me and then I would fall asleep. And then my older daughter would come visit. And I always forget a few weeks when I'm depressed like that. It's almost like my brain protects me from the worst stuff. So I, um, I forgot. And I asked my older daughter, why have you ignored me? How come you never come see me? And she used to come see me every couple of days and I didn't remember. So that really hurt her. That really hurt her. I was on the couch for weeks and weeks and weeks and um, I wouldn't get dressed. I wouldn't clean the house. I wouldn't do dishes. I wouldn't feed my family. I didn't do any of it. My husband was just so understanding 
And then, well, oh, what was I going to tell you? Oh, this is far back. Another time I really hurt my older daughter was she was 17 at the time of the accident. And she had to take care of us because I, I lost my mom, um, mom position in the family. And she was doing everything and driving us everywhere and taking care of us and making decisions. And I would want to do something. And she would say, no, that's not a good idea. And I would get mad and I would fight with her. And um, that really hurt her. It took many years. We're really close now, but I hurt her a lot out of everybody. She really took the brunt of it. And she is so strong and so forgiving. Her and my husband will never, ever read the book. So they'll never know the nice things that I said about them. But yeah, they'll never know. I tell them and they love me now and they loved me then, but they weren't very happy with me. Yeah. So, yeah. So yes, um, my, my, my moods got worse, but actually I've been, I, I now, if I feel a little different and I don't want to call my doctor, that's the tell. If I don't want to call my doctor, that's when it's time to call. And if I won't, my husband will. And I have had a lot of, I could have gotten really manic or I could have gotten really low, but we call and they give, they've, you know, done, um, we call them tune-ups. They, they just, you know, might change my medicine a little bit or things like that. But now the reason that I don't have episodes is I finally, after all these years have learned, you can't go and go and go when you have a brain injury. I get overstimulated. It makes me grumpy. I have to actually write on my calendar on Tuesday and Thursday. I have it on there every week. No appointments, stay home so I can have rest because when I don't get my rest, that's when I get overstimulated. Like I can't even go to the gym because I hear the clinking of the weights and I see all the people and they move a lot mm -hmm. and the moving a lot yep. makes me overstimulated. And then they have the loud music. I can't take it. I've gone in there and left five minutes later and not worked out. I can't do that. I've gotten myself to a point where I've had to stay in my room for three days before no, um, no TV on, no people just stay by myself. But now I have a good yeah. routine. So, yeah. Might yeah. have been telling you more than you even wanted to know. No, 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 not at all. I, I know exactly what you There's mean. There's no so, such thing as TMI with me and Rob. We learned that. Okay. Okay. Are you going to sneeze? We could, we could write a book. <laughs> oh, you're laughing. No. no, I could just tell Rob is like, Ashley, be quiet. Don't we could write a book. Any further. <laughs> you should. I would read it. Our book should be would be called TMI. <laughs> We're almost like brother and sister because I feel like we can talk about anything. But when you have a brain injury, can't you talk about anything to anyone? I can. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, my wife has to reel me in. Yes, Sorry? my husband does too. But his big thing now is if I go to an appointment and I have to talk to somebody about something that's not really, that's uh could be a not con. Okay. It could turn into a confrontation. He says, please don't get arrested, Dawn. That's his new thing because I was in a safe way. And there, I, I was in this line that said, consultation. And there was another line that said drop off, but you were supposed to stay in the consultation line even to go to the drop off window. I didn't know that. 
I stood right in front of the drop off window. Somebody else was there. I thought I was just in line. And this lady came up to me from the consultation line and when they called for the next customer, you cut in line. You knew I was in line. You did that on purpose. And she was yelling at me and I took it for a little bit. And then I kept saying, I'm confused. I'm confused. I don't understand. And she's like, you understand. Well, I didn't understand. And I turned around to her and I got very close, which I'm so glad I didn't get closer. And I said, you bitch. And I turned around and I ran out of the store <laughs> and I sat in my car and cried because I didn't mean to do it. It just came out. She, she was in my face and she was yelling at me and I was confused. I was genuinely yeah. confused, but she didn't believe me and that hurt me. Yeah. And when you have someone yelling at you, that makes it worse. That's just escalating the situation to a higher level. Yes. And I was so upset. Don't you, we call it going from white to red, like white is calm. And then all of a sudden something can make you angry and it's that fast. And all of a sudden things are coming out of my mouth and I don't even know what's coming out of my mouth. It's just coming. That happens to Veronica too. Um, have you heard of naltrexone? Naltrexone? Yes. Um, I don't believe I have. That's for if you have an overactive amygdala. The amygdala is your, I don't even know where it is on your body, on your head, but. Fight or flight. Yes. And I have that, that when you have PTSD, I don't know why they still say you have PTSD, even if you think you've recovered from it, but my psychiatrist put me on it because I was, I'm just very fast to blow. And it actually usually gives me time to take one breath and think a little, do I want to do this? And it usually works, but that day it did not work. Uh, oh, I was just going to make a joke, uh, like Thanksgiving, how we thank people for family and friends and health and stuff. And we thank you for the magic pill that you get to take every day <laughs> i'm so grateful for it my husband is so grateful so are my kids because i fly off the handle so fast i didn't used to be that way we could talk all night seriously dawn i can't thank you enough for writing this book this is um this is a must thank read you. so i just want to encourage anybody watching tonight's episode to to go over to amazon books a million it, those kind of places you could order yeah, from barnes and noble all of all of all of them yeah yeah if if so, you yeah. google my name if you google my name you'll see everywhere they are okay and i will you, i'll put a screenshot of this different. i'll put a screenshot of this up on the screen as well with directions on how you can get the book if you're if you're interested in it, I'd highly recommend it. Thank you. Um, this Thank is the part you. where we normally close out with any final thoughts. Um, we'll start with Ashley. Ashley, do you have any closing thoughts? I'm thankful for my magical anxiety. <laughs> I'm, I'm still stuck on that Thanksgiving joke. No, it was a pleasure to meet you, Dawn. And I think it's wonderful what you and your daughter are doing teaching people about brain injuries especially younger people and um you know i really wish you both the best with everything in life thank you